Hey folks, end all be all here, and we are back with the the finals of week two. Um, it's uh, it's been an interesting week. Really uh, tough opponents. Really uh, good uh, good matches. And before I move on to my finals, uh, let me give you a quick overview of my second opponent of the week, Lena. Uh, it was a pretty interesting match. He was a you know 950k lifetime banners opponent, um, six GLs to my five. Uh, but as I've mentioned in a previous video, GL advantage really doesn't matter as much as effective GL count. Um, and uh, what I did for my opponent, Lena, was I set a relatively tough defense. I kept a JMK, Gas, CLS, and uh, um, and uh, my uh, Omicron uh, Zam Bounty Hunter team down south. And he ended up using, I think, two or three GLs uh, down south over here, even though there was only one GL on uh, defense. I think he used one GL against uh, um, against Gas, probably one against uh, CLS as well. I don't remember. Uh, or maybe against the, the Omicron Zam. I think he might have used a GL there. And then at the top, I had kept uh, another GL. So I'd kept my JMK down south, Lord Vader up north. And then I kept a Darth Maul team, and uh, which got a couple of holes, in fact. So that was good to see. And then down south, uh, I knew that he would spend most of his GLs up front. And so I laid a trap with a, G with a Ray uh, at the back. And I think he did have a GL for the back. Maybe it was JMK, uh, JML, but I think the JML failed against the Ray and he didn't have anything else left to uh, to defeat that. If he had one shot that, uh, then uh, it would have been a, a different story for me. But um, because I, I ended up dropping tons of banners, you can see my score over there, 1601. Uh, I ended up dropping tons of banners. If, I, if he had cleared me, he would have probably won by about 20 banners or so. So it was a tough match uh, because he did keep a relatively tough defense. Uh, but anyway, now on to the finals. That was match two. Now on to the finals. I'm facing a really good opponent this time. Sap Todd from the uh, guild 101st Beskar Battalion. I believe it's a German guild. Um, Sap Todd is a viewer of mine. He did message re me, reach out to me on on uh, the game messaging system and, and uh, you know, just said that he's a viewer and uh, asked me if I was going to record the match. Definitely I was going to record this match because it's one of the more interesting matches of this week. Um, definitely the toughest opponent I've faced this season. Because uh, not only uh, is he, look at his legacy lifetime championship scores, uh, 1.01 million. And uh, he's got, uh, you know, um, all the advantages uh, in terms of modding, in terms of uh, roster. Uh, previously, he has achieved a rank of 46 in Kyber uh, in, in, uh, in an earlier division. Um, so he's a really good player in terms of efficiency and all of that. Um, and uh, it goes reasonably heavy on defense. Uh, which is why you see 880 defensive holds over here. And then uh, if I take a look at his roster, you'll see that he's got all six GLs. Uh, and at this point of time, I still have only five GLs. I don't have Sith Eternal, although I'm in the process of unlocking Sith Eternal. At this point of time for this match, I had only five GLs. Uh, all of his GLs are uh, at least R8 with an R9 on Jedi Master Luke, which I think is a great choice. I think um, Jedi Master Luke is one of the foremost uh, candidates to receive R9 just because of the way it synergizes with this kit, uh, the bump up in protection and uh, the damage that all the Jedi do with their with their lead ability. Um, so, you know, really good uh, modding, really good uh, roster and uh, not only effective GL count, not only the actual GL count on paper, he's got six versus my five, but even the effective GL count. Uh, if I take a look at uh, his history, he's used all sorts of off-meta counters to uh, counter uh, uh, Jedi Master Kenobi, Lord Vader, um, all the other GLs. He's not afraid to go uh, um, go with uh, with non-traditional counters. He always keeps Lord Vader and Jedi Master Kenobi on defense, um, and then uh, tries out uh, you know other things to take them out, like SLKR or uh, or JML usually, uh, Ray sometimes. So it's uh, it's really interesting to see the the tactics that uh, that he uses, um, and then he's not afraid to use. Uh, he almost never uses a GL on a non-GL team. He always has a, an off-meta counter against that. Um, so his effective GL count also is higher on paper than mine. So I was prepared for a tough fight. It's going to be a really really um, tough fight. But uh, uh, let's go ahead and see 
what uh, what I decided to do. So since I had a, a slight of an slight bit of an underdog uh, uh, thing going on over here, I decided that the only way I'm going to win is uh, if I prevent him from clearing because there's no way that I was going to clear my opponent's board. And uh, since I knew that he always set Lord Vader and JMK on defense, um, the one team, and then he always takes Ray. Um, Ray, Ray is also usually always on defense. So he takes Sith Eternal, SLKR, and Jedi Master Luke on offense. So of all these three GLs, the only one which is capable of defeating Jedi Master Kenobi is going to be the Jedi Master Luke. So my strategy is very simple. I just wanted to try to uh, get him to, to use his Jedi Master Luke and the Jedi team in front. Um, and then save my Jedi Master Kenobi at the back. So place my Jedi Master Kenobi at the back so that if he uses up his Jedi Master Luke team at the front, then he's got nothing to beat uh, Jedi Master Kenobi because Sith Eternal has a tough time. Ray also, especially if you've already used up the Jedi, Ray also has a really tough time to beat uh, Jedi Master Kenobi. So that's what I did over here. I set uh, all the teams which can potentially pull um jkr and jedi master luke so i set, set my slkr over here uh, hoping that he would use his sl his uh, jm uh, jml versus the slkr um, i kept my uh, darth revan under maul and that one is a re reasonably easy team to take out in uh, gac especially if you have uh, jedi knight revan lead because jedi knight revan is uh, what counteracts his lead counteracts the uh, the maul bonus turn meter gain at the beginning so i was hoping that if he uses his jedi knight revan over here he will not have his jedi knight revan um, available for the Jedi Master Luke counter, which is pretty critical. The Jedi Master Luke counter to JMK really needs Jedi Knight Revan. Um, and then even the Grievous team that I set over there, he has Bad Batch, so I wanted to put in something to prevent the Bad Batch counter. So I put in BB-8 over there. Um, typically, people tend to go with Jedi Knight Revan or uh, Jedi or Bast Basti lead if they see uh, BB-8 with, uh, with Grievous. Um, so I've, I was doing all that I could to try to pull out the Jedi Knight Revan uh, in the front over here. And then uh, at the back, what I did was uh, I kept my Jedi Master Kenobi. I wanted to save as much for offense as I could because um, the only way that I could win was uh, was by clearing and then and then by preventing my opponent from clearing. So at the back, mostly weak teams, but uh, I did keep my Jedi Master Kenobi out there as well with the R2-D2. So I was hoping if he had already used up his Jedi Master Luke up front, um, then both the uh, Ray as well as uh, Sith Eternal will have... Uh, a relatively tough time with the um, well not ray well uh, slkr and sith eternal will have a tough time to take out against uh, jedi master kenobi and then at the top what i did was i kept uh, again re really weak teams i i usually don't go this light on defense so because i was trying to even if it was dirty, I wanted to get the full clear. Even if it was messy and, you know, I take, ended up taking multiple battles. I wanted to get the full clear, which is why I saved a ton for offense. Um, and you can see over here, there's really nothing much over here on, on defense. It's pretty easy teams. Um, and then uh, at the back, I decided to keep my usual standard uh, ship squad, which is the Empire squad and uh, uh, both the Empire squads, one Executor, one Tarkin. So... Uh, let's take a look at what my opponent has done. So he threw a curveball in the sense that he um, decided to keep his Sith Eternal Emperor on defense and keep his Ray on offense. Typically, I was expecting to see Lord Vader and JMK down south and Ray up north with scoundrels is typically what he tends to keep. But uh, he must have kept the Ray for offense because down south, uh, down down north, um, I see Sith Eternal. And uh, the comp that he's used over here is basically meant to prevent troopers because you've got... Uh, um, you've got uh, uh, Marauder in there who gains turn meter when people attack out of turn, which the troopers always do. You've got um, um, uh, Dooku in there who's going to counteract when any AoEs happen and land ability block or stun. You've got Droidica who, if he pulls up his uh, damage immunity, the troopers, if you don't bring in a dispeller like, um, like maybe um, um, Death Trooper, um, then uh, you know you're going to have a tough time getting through that because you might not be able to target C directly, and you'll be f forced to go after a, a damage immune Droidica. So this, the way that he set up the Sith Eternal team is to prevent the trooper counter, which I think is pretty neat. Um, he's got uh, gas over there. He's got Omicron Zam with under Django lead. I'd kept that in the last uh, um, Grand Arena match. Then he's got uh, 
uh, scoundrels under BAM, no IG-11 and Quill. Um, those are up north. I think he probably, um, he split up the scoundrel team and the bounty hunter team, which is interesting to see, um, probably for extra turn meter generation. And then down south, um, he has, uh, uh, he's kept both his Lord Vader as well as JMK. And this is the one I was, uh, uh, I was a little nervous about because it is a tough JMK squad. Usually he keeps Mace, this time he decided to keep General Kenobi. And uh, this is a superior squad, especially with Padme in there. Um, it, uh, with all the cleansing and extra healing which is going on, and the extra mass assist, the Padme version tends to get a little more tricky. Jedi and Anakin also gets tricky, but uh, typically my opponent has uh, has always kept uh, Jedi Knight Anakin with his Omicron Qui-Gon Jinn. So I was a little worried about the JMK team. And then there's the Lord Vader team, which is not that threatening. There's no Maul in there. They've got three tanks and Tarkin, which is really uh, nothing much. Um, you can you can take that out by um, by JML pretty easily. Um, and then you've got uh, a, a JTR squad with the heroes. And you have Darth Revan with Talon in there, again, to prevent my troopers, because um, the Darth Revan by himself, I would have been able to trooper it, but with the 20 speed bump that Talon gives, um, that's just out of the out of reach for me to um, to uh, trooper it. So let's go ahead and get started with taking out the uh, the, the two GLs, because I needed to know whether uh, I'm able to clear or not. Well, before that, actually, my opponent did get a chance to go, and uh, he did clear my board which I was pretty disappointed about. He got 1677, so he did drop a couple of battles, one on my ship and one on my uh, SLKR up front. I believe he used, uh, up, I, I saw the battle history, I believe he used Ray against SLKR, and uh, uh, only SLKR was left, and then he finished it off with Mon Mothma. So he didn't fall for my trap, which was trying to get him to use JML up front. Um, he used Ray against that, even though at the risk of low banners, um, he did use Ray and failed, but did manage to clear that. And then for the other three teams, he didn't use any other GLs. So um, I think he used all uh, off-meta counters without any of his, uh, without using the JKR. Um, and uh, he managed to one-shot the front zone. So did, he did have his JKR as well as his Jedi Master Luke when he uh, approached the back. And uh, um, and no surprise, you know, with an R9 JML and a really, really fast JML. I believe his JML is uh, typically, out, uh, I think, outspeeds my uh, my Jedi Master Kenobi as well. So he was able to one-shot it for no pro with no problem at all. So one change that I made heading into the next week is I went in and uh, uh, I gave an R8 to my Jedi Master Luke. And I got him up to really, really fast speed. I bumped up his speed by another 5 or 10. And uh, now he should be able to outspeed most Jedi Master Kenobis that I will see on defense. Because he's he's at a blazing fast speed. And he's got extra protection, extra damage. Um, because I'm going to primarily use Jedi Master Luke myself to counter Kenobis. It makes, uh, it makes things uh, so much more easier to manage. And it gives so much more flexibility to your roster. So, uh, my plan did not work. He was able to... Uh, uh, take out my Jedi Master Kenobi with his JML. Uh, the other teams are pretty weak, so no surprise that they all got one shot. And then, uh, so that was one dropped battle against my SLKR. Uh, no surprise over here, everything was one shot. And then at the back, on my ship zone, he did drop one battle on my uh, uh, Executor as well. So I had a little bit of room, but not much, just uh, two drop battles. Um, and, uh, you know, I still have to take out uh, one shot the rest of his teams. To, uh, for me to uh, to stand a chance at victory. I need to one-shot everything. I've got no room for error at all. If I drop, uh, maybe I can drop one battle, but if I drop two battles, uh, I'm out of the reckoning. And I can't afford to drop any GL battles because I see three GLs on the board and I've got three GLs on offense with me. So I need to be able to uh, clear uh, uh, one GL with each GL. There's no uh, room for failure over there. So, without wasting any time, let's go into the uh, Jedi Master Kenobi battle because that's going to be the trickiest one. I've practiced, I, I decided to take my Lord Vader against that and I've practiced a ton over there in the arena but with Padme and GK in there with a the double cleanse and double assist, uh, I just wasn't able to make any comp work. Uh, very f uh, less frequently, this particular comp did end up working which is um, uh, Vader and Piet and Maul. So, this is a really expensive team. Um, the way that I uh, I do it over here is I reduce the cooldowns on Cat first, and then um, I don't use up all of Maul's abilities. I I uh, just use up one of his abilities, and then go in and uh, 
uh, you know, um, get him back to five stacks as soon as possible. Because the key to this team is to make sure that you uh, that you keep reducing the cooldowns of Cat and Padme to prevent the cleanse and prevent the big hit from uh, from Cat from ever happening. That's the only chance you have against the Cat Padme version. So um, I'm uh, you know trying to get down General Kenobi as soon as I could, uh, and that's another problem over here. So yeah, you can see over here. Uh, with uh, with five stacks on my maul, the the next the very next time I'm, I get the uh, the uh, the turn with maul, I go ahead and reduce Padme's uh, cooldown, and then I uh, I start targeting Kenobi again, and then again I do the middle ability, which means I get back to five stacks as soon as possible. Um, if I if I had my maul at slight, I, my maul is only R5. If my all maul was R7 or R8, higher relics, more damage, then I would have gone after Kenobi and got him down. Um, because the key to this counter working is you have to get Kenobi down as soon as possible. Uh, and you can see over here, I wasn't even a, a cull from my Vader wasn't able to get uh, Kenobi Kenobi down. So I get into my ultimate fast enough, but uh, you know with Kenobi's cleanse available right now. It uh, it really puts a damper on me because now I haven't been able to uh, I haven't been able to get Kenobi down before uh, Jedi General Kenobi is going to go on in uh, Jedi Master Kenobi is going to go in ultimate and this counter has got a very less chance of working. Um, I reduce the cooldown on Cat again and now I uh, with five stacks on Maul I try to go after Kenobi and try to see if I can get him down at least trigger the Savior portion of it. Um, so the Savior was triggered. Everybody has ability block, um, but uh, you can see over here, um, Kenobi is, uh, is, has done his own ultimate right now. So we're in a tough situation now. We need to, we've got, uh, you know, just under three minutes left and we need to get all the characters down, including, uh, you know, Kenobi. Um, and if Mace was in there, like he, like my opponent usually kept, this would have been no problem at all. And I would have gone ahead and, uh, you know, killed Mace by now. There was no more cleansing, nothing else of that sort. Uh, and would have been no problem at all. But uh, with Kenobi in there, it uh, it does become a problem. I know a lot of people like to save Kenobi for offense or they like to keep him with a, with a, a Qui-Gon Jinn team. But Kenobi really makes this particular squad so good, especially if you're not going with a JMK cat counter, if you're going with an off-meta counter uh, or, uh, you know, uh, another GL against uh, JMK, then Kenobi just does such an amazing job in this particular team. And you can see over here, I'm trying to get to my second ultimate with my Lord Vader. Um, <clears throat> still, uh, you know, just under two minutes left and the whole team is still standing, which is not good. Um, I'm trying to, yeah, almost down. And then here, yeah, Cat uses her ultimate, gets rid of my Royal Guard, which is not ideal. Ideally, you want... Uh, you want uh, multiple tanks standing so that uh, the access to the rest of your team is restricted. Um, again, Jedi, uh, J damage immunity on Ken Kenobi, not a good idea. Um, and uh, at this point, I've given up hope because there's just one and a half minutes left. And these guys are, you know, um, they're doing a really good job against my particular team. So uh, not really, even though I'm close to my second ultimate, there's not many characters that I can pull uh, mastery from so it's uh, not a good position for me to be in i'm a new user to lord vader i'm still trying to you know get uh, get used to using him in the arena since i just unlocked him so i'm still trying to work out a lot of the ways to use him um so here you go i get my second ultimate but no other uh, uh, you know allies to get that uh, the uh, ability or get the mastery from so i need to still figure out how best to use kenobi uh, uh, to use lord lord vader i must be doing something wrong um i think i probably would have won against the uh, um, the non-Vader, non-General Kenobi comp, but um, with Kenobi in there, maybe I need to do something differently. Um, a lot of people say that, you know, you need to go in with multiple tanks and have all of them survive. Um, and then, uh, you know, you can, um, you can win with that. Um, I still haven't given up hope though. There's 30 seconds left and I've managed to get down to two, two characters. Um, but I need to get Padme down before I can even begin to uh, get to Kenobi. And uh, there you see, almost got Padme down, but Kenobi heals him up again, heals her up again, and gives her damage immunity, which means I just can't get her down again. And with six seconds left, there's just uh, no hope left. So came close, 
and uh, got to my ultimate but uh, you know by then time was over maybe another 30 seconds and i would have uh, i would have done it or maybe i should have played something differently uh, in the beginning so by this time i'd lost hope because you know there's it's kenobi is not an easy clean up other gls yes maybe but kenobi is is not a very easy clean up and i don't have any gls to spare as well so what i decided to do was just go ahead and uh, use my jml versus lord vader like i'd planned um this one is a pretty standard counter my my jml is pretty fast able to outspeed the lord vader and apply and this is a lucky ability block uh, i do have my jml modded for potency but um, the way i like to do it over here is i like to pass the turn meter to to uh, luke stun everyone and then uh, go after uh, one of the characters um one of the tanks out here um in this case the the non tank character over here is grand moff tarkin um i was wondering about why my opponent kept tarkin um instead of another tank uh, maybe they just hadn't relicked another tank enough but tarkin is actually not a bad choice because you know when you when vader pulls mastery um he pulls based on the mastery of his allies and uh, you know tarkin is r7 given that uh, you know um you have to have him at r7 to get uh, uh gls um and uh, you know you'll get a, a decent amount of mastery for him um so there you go i've uh, managed to reach ultimate with my jml and once you reach ultimate it's a uh, it's a very easy job against lord vader because uh, you can take out the tanks pretty easily with the um, the ultimate ability um and then um and then you can just alternate between using your um, uh, using jml's um uh, um uh, uh reduce cooldown uh, ability as well as the ability block uh, uh special um so here you see once in uh, every once in a way i'm going and uh, using the the uh, uh lead ability to try to get the uh, the the tanks down one by one and even with an r7 jml uh the special ability does tons of damage still and uh, able to take out uh, uh quite a few of these uh, these characters um so three tanks left but uh, you know the the non mall version is uh, reasonably simple for um, uh, jedi master luke to take out um and i have shakti and jedi knight raven in there because i like to have a couple of sources of uh, uh cleanse because this team re relies very heavily on uh, debuffs a lot of dad dots and all of that and uh, jedi master luke will be fine but the side characters will die to dots unless you have a sort some sort of cleansing mechanism which is why i like to take at least a couple of cleansers uh, we've also got a couple of healers in there you've got uh, uh, hoda as well as uh, um as well as shark t in there to provide some necessary healing um and then uh, you've got luke for the damage and for the additional control ability in the form of stuns so you see over here with the jedi master luke because after his ultimate his both his specials are on two turn cooldown instead of four turn i'm uh, using uh, the ability block in one turn and i'm using the uh, um the cooldown reduction in another turn so vader almost lord vader almost never gets to use his uh, any of his specials because he's kept under lockdown completely by jedi master luke which is the way it should be so you see over here point to vader do the cooldown reductions and then um, the next turn do the ability block and then that way vader almost never gets to use his specials which is great that's the way you uh, you want it to be so once jedi master luke reaches his ultimate it's game over for lord vader even if it's a tanky version um this one i believe was an r8 version um even if it's a tanky lord vader um there's really no problem at all um you should be able to uh, get him down in uh, in plenty of time um there's no healing immunity on this team unfortunately but that's uh, really not much of an issue uh, because um you've got uh, you've got tons of damage in this team and tons of ways to um, to get some of this damage uh, inflicted on him lord vader there you go got him in red <clears throat> and uh, keep using the special on him and there we go one big hit and we ended up with i think 61 banners all right so now um i'm in a tough situation so i was hoping to use gas for um uh, for uh, um for the uh, darth revan squad but because i failed up top i'll have to use something expensive over there to clean up so i i i had to risk it with something else like uh, aura for example mm -hmm. so i decided to take my aura team over here against ga against darth revan 
um, because my troopers weren't fast enough. It's a 340 Darth Revan. Um, that means uh, with Darth Talon in there, it's 360. My troopers, I don't believe, uh, are as fast as that, especially since I've already used up Piet up there uh, against uh, General Jedi Master uh, Kenobi. So I had to try my uh, my luck at uh, at Aura. And by this time, you know, I'd almost given up because I really didn't have a spare GL. So I knew I wasn't going to clear. But I wanted to try to see if my Aura team would be able to do the job. So here, the key is to get your contract before uh, Django, uh, before Bam gets to go. And I'm already at 70%. Um, but the problem is, right over here, Bam gets to take a turn. You saw over here, Bam got to take a turn when the contract was at 80%. Well, not Bam, Django, uh, Ma Mando, basically. He got to take a turn when the contract was at 80%. Um, so, ideally, you want Grief to go before Mando goes. And um, and then, uh, uh, you know, with the two mass assist, one from Bosk, one for Grief, once both of them uh, do those mass assists, the contract would be fulfilled by then. And then, when Mando's first turn comes around, then you can go and annihilate Darth Revan immediately and the battle is very much under control. What ended up happening is even though my grief was faster than my Mando, because Mando crit uh, when I did the mass assist from Bosk, he ended up getting turn meter and he ended up outspeeding my grief. And that's why my Mando's turn came first before grief had a chance to do the mass assist and, and get contract. So my, co my contract was only at 80% when Mando got to go. So I had to cycle around a second time with Mando's uh, ability uh, before I could get a chance to uh, annihilate someone. So that's a problem. So I need to, especially if I'm using this counter, I need to either speed up my grief way more so that he gets to go before Mando goes um, because Mando gets turn meter when he crits. So I have to factor in how much, uh, if he crits, how much of turn meter he'll get and make sure that grief is faster than that or I need to slow my Mando down so that even if he crits, he won't be, uh, uh, he will uh, he will be slower and he will get the contract after uh, grief has had a chance to go or I reduce the crit chance on my Mando so that he doesn't crit, which is counterintuitive because you want him to crit to get turn meter. Um, and then uh, I'll be, I'll, my, my uh, contract will be ready by the time Mando's first turn is around. So that's a critical error that I think I've been making. Uh, even in my counter versus gas, I think that's what must have happened because my, my uh, Mando crit and I was able to get ahead of grief and I didn't have my contract ready by the time uh, Mando's turn came around. So that's one critical change that I'll be making going forward. So you can see over here, uh, you know, I'm, uh, Mando's turn came and went and grief still hasn't gone. Uh, and I've got the contract, but there's really no point in getting the contract if, uh, you know, you, your Mando still has to go. Uh, and there's still a little bit of turn meter left on my Mando. He's almost uh, overlapped uh, Darth Revan. But you see, Darth Revan is almost going to go right now. And uh, unless, uh, yeah, unless it's, there's a miracle which will happen, there's no way that, uh, um, that uh, <clears throat> my Mando is going to get a chance to go twice before Darth Revan goes even once. So that was a problem. So once Darth Revan went and applied fear, my Mando, even though he got to get a, take a turn, because he was feared, he uh, ended up not taking a turn and uh, the counter went to hell. So that's uh, another key thing that I learned over here, that if I want to do this counter, I'll have to probably slow my Mando down a little bit or speed my grief up so that uh, the, uh, the bonus TM that Mando gets after he crits does not outspeed my my grief so that i think is going to be critical for me to make this counter work i failed with this counter against gas once um and then um and then against darth revan now but i think uh, you know um, now i think i figured out what i need to do to get it to work so by this time i know that this is a loss so the rest of these matches that you see that i've recorded are going to be testing um so you know uh, no shame to losing to an opponent like sap Todd. he's a really great uh, player great mods um, and real good knowledge of the game. So, uh, you know, going two and one um, um, is uh, is actually a great outcome because, you know, as long as you keep getting two and one, you will keep rising steadily in terms of your skill rank. Um, and especially once things settle down in, um, in uh, you know, uh, one or two months from now, 
2-1 and one is going to be a great week because you'll be faced up with other opponents with the same skill range as you. And 2-1 and one is going to be a, an, a good outcome. So a little bummed that I didn't go 3-0 and oh for this week because I've won the first two matches. But, uh, you know, 2-1 uh, and one is, is fine. Um, you know, um, it, it gives me a chance to learn against some of these uh, better modded, better roster opponents who I'll get to face uh, much more frequently in the future. So against... Uh, Jedi training Ray with heroes. This is typically a tough team. I always keep this team on defense, um, but I needed to go with something cheap. Otherwise, I wouldn't have anything left to uh, to counter, to clear my opponent's board. Um, and I decided to go with the sisters over here, which can get a little dicey, just like sisters versus Grievous. Um, there's a lot of RNG over here. It depends on who JTR targets with the healing immunity, with the days, uh, and how the exposers land. Um, so tons of um, tons of RNG over here, but you know that's the thing with sisters. You know they make every battle a little bit spicy. Um, the goal over here is to take out resistance hero Finn first and foremost because his uniques give a lot of uh, um, interesting buffs and um, and uh, you know um, uh, enable the team to really hit way beyond their weight class. So that's the first goal. Always get rid of uh, resistance hero. Finn, then go after Resistance Hero Po. He's also got some neat, nifty stuff that he does on his unique. So I'm applying Plague over here, trying to get uh, everyone down as soon as possible. Um, you can see over here, if uh, Po had targeted uh, uh, Daka instead of uh, uh, Talzin like he did, I would have been in real trouble because my my uh, Daka would be dead and there would be no way to revive her um, apart from Talzin's mass uh, um, mass, uh, you know, attack ability, but uh, things worked out, and uh, I am uh, I managed to heal up my Daka, and managed to get this team down for uh, about uh, 65 or maybe 64 or 63 banners. I think that's still oh no, it's 65 because I I ended with a mass assist which heals up everyone. Um, so 60 banners, 65 is the max minus five. So I ended up with that much, 60. Now, I decided that, uh, you know, I have only one GL left, which is uh, Ray, and I need to clear two GLs on the board. There's uh, Sith Eternal, and then there's Jedi Master Kenobi I need to clean up. There's uh, really no uh, non-GL counter, uh, or it's very tough to clean up uh, Jedi Master Kenobi without a GL of your own. Um, he's one of the tougher GLs to clean up. Um, other GLs, you know, you can use a variety of other things like Geos or Mon Mothma or Troopers. Um, but uh, Gen Jedi Master Kenobi um, needs needs a heavier GL to clean up. So I decided to save my Ray for Jedi Master Kenobi. And I was trying to see what else I could do to uh, take out Sith Eternal. Now, this one is... Uh, uh, Sith Eternal you almost never see on defense. It's an R8 Sith Eternal. But uh, I decided to test out something. Uh, you know, Jedi, the Qui-Gon Jinn team is great on offense. Um, the That, uh, you know, preventing death thing doesn't work if you're going against a GL. But the offense boost is still there. So I was hoping to take at least a few characters down and then uh, clean up the Sith Eternal with, with, the, with some other characters. So here you can see uh, Jedi Knight Anakin got... Uh, um, got linked, which is not a great sign because you want him to, to remain alive. But what I decided to do was try to take out some of these uh, uh, big damage characters. So Sith Marauder, for example, he uh, can do a lot of pain. So I decided to take him down. And luckily over here, the uh, Sith uh, Eternal Emperor targeted Barris instead of uh, Jedi Knight Anakin. So I was able to uh, get uh, Jedi Knight, uh, you know, uh, Jedi Knight Anakin's big AOE to pop off and get uh, at least some amount of, uh, um, you know, sides taken out. Now, you can see over here, healing immunity, which is great from Jedi Knight Anakin. And I was able to do a 127 hit and uh, take out uh, take out uh, Sith Eternal, which I wasn't expecting, to be frank. Um, and then another big hit to take out... Um, Droidica. So 59 banners versus a, a GL using a non-GL counter. I was pretty uh, stoked that that worked. I, I really wasn't expecting uh, Qui-Gon Jinn team to take out Sith Eternal that easily. But um, I, probably that was a little bit of luck because um, um, if Jedi Knight Anakin was targeted, um, it would have gone down south really, really fast. Um, it also helped that I had Cam in there um, to give some additional offense bonuses. 
But uh, if you notice over there, that team got taken out uh, without uh, Qui-Gon Jinn dying, which means that that extra offensive bonus wasn't really given. So that's uh, that's definitely an, an option in the future, if you, especially if you face some weaker GL comps. Um, Qui-Gon Jinn is actually a pretty strong character to take against that. I was saving my Qui-Gon Jinn for, um, uh, for the gas team up north um, because I was going to use Ray Watt to clear up the sea. But, uh, you know, Qui-Gon Jinn ended up working there and I don't think I, I, I would have anything for gas anyway. Um, so we just have to, you know, it was just a good opportunity for me to test stuff out. So decided to take my Ray with the, the rest of the Resistance uh, characters. I didn't have heroes in there. Um, just decided to throw in uh, whatever else was there uh, from my resistance team to be able to take out um, um, the Jedi Master Kenobi. So um, let's let's take a look at how this cleanup goes because there's Padme in there. It's not just a lone Jedi Master Kenobi. There's Padme in there as well to provide additional healing, additional uh, you know mass assist and uh, you know tons of bonus protection and anytime that there's bonus protection over here on this team they can't be crit so padme actually has got some very decent synergy against these guys so i'm just trying to uh, get to my whirlwind so that i can take out uh, padme first and then i can focus down on kenobi so you can see over here the savior got triggered um so now i have to take out padme a second time so come up with the you know the whirlwind again and take out Padme again, and then I can go after uh, Kenobi. Get into my ultimate, and um, trying to do as much damage as I can with Padme, and these guys are so, uh, oh, so uh, survivable. You can see Padme was just a little bit of red health. Almost took her out, but that was just not enough. So I need to go through the whole uh, process again, and try to take, uh, you know, try to get Ray down below. Uh, 60%, 50% health so that I can do another whirlwind. So, uh, another whirlwind and this time Padme is out. And now I just need to survive a little bit more in order to get Kenobi down. So you can see, if it was a regular non-GL team, it would have been a, a really tough job to clean this up because there's just so much of healing happening. There's so much of... Uh, um, just, just so much of, uh, you know, um, damage on this team. Even Kenobi by himself, he does... a uh, quite a lot of damage with this first special and uh, without uh, you know Ray's ultimate to help this team survive a bit um, this would have uh, you know gone down south pretty uh, pretty well and uh, you know a lot of uh, popular teams used for cleanup are teams that generate a lot of turn meter like uh, uh, you know Geos or Mon Mothma or Troopers the problem with all of those teams against Kenobi you can't clean them up because Kenobi's lead prevents turn meter generation it's probably the only lead which actually does that so other gls you might be able to use those kind of teams to clean up you can't really clean up kenobi with the with those kind of teams just because of the nature of his leadership and the nature of his skipped kit so uh, you need something heavy for that if any of you have found a better way to clean up kenobi um you know in let me know in the comments i'm uh, thinking of uh, you know putting together a little counter video for uh, off meta counters and hoping that uh, i'm able to to learn something about uh, how to clean Kenobi's up because um, I definitely plan to use uh, you know um, non Kenobi non Lord Vader counters to Jedi Master Kenobi going forward. So if a cleanup is required, uh, you know um, getting to know how to clean up Kenobi is actually a very good skill to have. All right, so I decided to just go ahead with my gas counter against uh, Maul and uh, against Lord Vader or against uh, Darth. Uh, Revan and uh, clean this up. Um, unfortunately, this team is turn meter loaded, so I didn't have the turn meter advantage. If I hadn't turn meter loaded them, my uh, my uh, Rex would have gone first. But a turn meter loaded Darth Revan team, there are very few uh, squads which can take that out. So I had to use my um, my gas because I didn't really have any other squads which could uh, take out a turn meter loaded uh, team. So this is the very first turn that I'm getting, by the way. And uh, if it was any other team, I probably wouldn't have survived. But just because gas is in there, I am able to get uh, some amount of damage done and take uh, Basti out. Let's see. I think I take Basti out. No, not yet. 
So all four of them are still standing by the time gas goes down twice. And, uh, you know, these guys are able to take out my arc trooper. So I have uh, all four characters standing. So it's up to gas now to go and and uh, and solo them, which uh, he's done. I mean, gas is it's possible for gas to do that, especially when he's in solo mode right now. He's able to um, uh, one on one versus Darth Revan should be uh, no problem. But bad banners and, uh, you know, there was really limited options that I had to clean up gas. So at the back, I was expecting uh, Kenobi, uh, I was expecting uh, Qui-Gon Jinn and um, um, uh, BB-8 with uh, Grievous, but I think he decided to save BB-8 with his JTR squad up front. So there's a new version of Grievous that I have. Um, so I decided to test out my Bad Batch counter against uh, Qui-Gon Jinn because that's uh, usually a reliable counter if you, um, if you play it right. So... Um, um, and it doesn't matter even if the enemy team goes first, um, because um, it, in some ways, actually, you want Jedi Knight Anakin's uh, AOE to happen before Qui-Gon Jinn dies, because if that happens, then he doesn't get all that extra bonus uh, offense. He just uh, has the, uh, you know, the the bonus from, um, from having that foresight, so his offense will be doubled. But that 400% extra offense that comes from Qui-Gon Jinn's death, that is not there. If... Uh, uh, if he does his AoE and then Qui-Gon Jinn dies, then Anakin just has his basic available. And then at the max, he can only kill one character and uh, and then the rest of your team goes and then you can um, you can control him and kill him. So that's another way of doing it is if you let Anakin go and use his AoE, um, if you've got a survival team like Bad Batch, they can survive one uh, pre-Qui-Gon Jinn death Anakin AoE. And then after that, you kill Anakin and then you can um, you can you can manage it. The second way of doing it is don't let them take a single turn at all, which is uh, the preferable way. So here you can see Shakti is faster, but uh, I've got a fast enough uh, echo. Um, and I managed to um, land a stun on everyone except for Qui-Gon Jinn. So I need to... And here I made uh, one mistake. Um, so the goal of this team uh, with Bad Batch is to kill Qui-Gon Jinn while Anakin is stunned so that his bonus turn is not procced. Um, what I should have done at this point of time, you can see the, the target is at, pointed at Anakin. I should have been pointing it at Qui-Gon Jinn because you can see over here, the assist happen and uh, Anakin goes into, um, um, uh, you know, Omega assist and Anakin goes into um, uh, yellow but that uh, blow probably could have killed uh, Qui-Gon Jinn by himself. And again over here, I do the same thing. I keep the target on Anakin while I do the AoE and Omega assists. And then that would have, if I had targeted Qui-Gon Jinn, Qui-Gon Jinn would have died and Anakin would have still been in stun mode. But, uh, so that's a mistake. So going forward, I'm going to change that. Um, as long as Anakin is stunned, I'm going to target Qui-Gon Jinn uh, because with Omega's assisting, Qui-Gon Jinn is going to be taken out then uh, as soon as possible and then um, and then I can uh, I can work on uh, on Anakin after he comes out of stun. So that's another reason why a lot of people are putting GK on the team because if uh, um, if GK was there and he was taunting then I wouldn't have been able to target Qui-Gon Jinn right away. I would have been forced to target uh, you know um, GK and GK uh, you know, going under uh, yellow health would have then triggered Anakin and caused him to come out of stun. And then when you start targeting uh, uh, Qui-Gon Jinn, then uh, Anakin does his AoE and blows everyone up um, if he's out of stun. So you need to make sure that you kill Qui-Gon Jinn while Anakin is stunned. And now you can see over here, what ended up happening was I targeted Qui-Gon Jinn uh, you know, about a couple of turns too late. And the moment I uh, I wasn't able to finish him off. If I was able to finish him off, it would, it would have been fine. But I wasn't able to finish him off. He, he was in red health. And that procced Anakin to come out of stun. And now I have no choice. If I go ahead and kill, kill, kill Qui-Gon Jinn, Anakin is going to go berserk with his, um, um, with his bonus offense and all of that. So the key, the big thing to learn is... Always kill, always kill Anakin, I'll always kill Qui-Gon Jinn while Anakin is stunned. It seems like a, such a common sense thing to do, but I don't know why I blanked out and, uh, and did that and was targeting Anakin at the time. Always target Qui-Gon Jinn if you can. Um, if you've got GK in there, then 
Yeah. Um, then you just have to hope that your AOE manages to kill Qui-Gon Jinn while Anakin is stunned. Um, that's the key to a counter to that team. Um, but, uh, you know, the Qui-Gon Jinn team is... Uh, it, it can cost a, a battle, but as long as you've killed the leader, it's a relatively easy cleanup. So I just took my, I believe I took my Geos in there. Yeah, I took my Geos in there to clean up um, the Anakin squad. Um, so it's a pretty uh, pretty easy cleanup. There's really not, nothing much over there. Um, you know, you just, um, um, as long as you've got debuffs over there, enough buffs and debuffs. Spy's big hit, even with Barris in there, should be able to clean this team up no problem at all. So I'm going to fast forward this a little bit because it's just a bunch of times that the Geos are hitting Barris and uh, I'm just going to, you know, wait till I get to my uh, snipe ability from uh, Spy and then uh, take out Barris and then it's just a question of uh, taking out uh, Shark team there. So the cleanup is really simple. A lot of people like to use Night Sisters to clean up... Uh, uh, you know, uh, Qui Gon Jinn team after Qui Gon Jinn has died as well. That also works perfectly fine. These are all really cheap counters. So, typically, a Qui Gon Jinn is, uh, you know, it's not an unsurmountable team. As long as you're able to do enough to get uh, um, Qui Gon Jinn down in the first turn, um, you can, um, you know, you can, uh, you can double shot the team. Uh, having GK in there makes it a little bit more tougher to one-shot Qui-Gon Jinn. You can do it very easily with Bad Batch, but you might end up dying. Um, but the other squads, uh, you know, with GK in there, uh, you know, you have to do what you can to... Um, you, you might have to take a more expensive team in there to clean that up. Um, anyway, so that is the extent of my recording. I mean, I did a, a bunch of other stuff. I did a bunch of other testing and all that, but I didn't really get anywhere much. So I'm going to just speed through the rest of it. Um, you know, I knew that by this time I was not going to clear. So I just did a, a bunch of stuff to, uh, you know, try to see what what the extent of my leftover teams, what, what kind of stuff can they take out. And, uh, you know, it's always good to get these, this kind of practice in when you get the opportunity. Um, you know, you can... Um, You'll, uh, you'll never know when you'll, you'll, you'll need to use the dregs of your roster to clear your opponent's zone for a, for a victory. So the rest of the, uh, the matches over here are just some, uh, you know, um, some cleanup matches, nothing much to, uh, to talk about. Uh, let me see if I can fast forward. Yeah. And then I tried troopers against this, uh, bound, this uh, BAM team, which is, you know, is always going to be a no-go. I really didn't have anything much for offense left at all. So kudos to my opponent. He set a really tough defense at the same time, saving enough for offense to clear my full board. Um, looking back, I think the mistake I made was I tried to compete roster to roster when I knew that that, that wasn't really a possibility. I just talked about this a couple of uh, videos ago, is that when you're out rostered like that, you need to play a very narrow zone. You can't play against your opponent's full roster. You need to make sure that you, you go all in, either 100% efficiency or 100% um, uh, defense. And I should have probably gone the 100% defense route. I put three on off three GLs on defense, three on offense. That was a middle route. I should have gone with at least five GLs on defense. Maybe, uh, yeah, five GLs. Well, I had five GLs. So I, I maybe should have put three below and two above and then try to clear at least one zone uh, and then prevent my oppo opponent from clearing more than a one or two zones. Um, that's something I probably could have tried. Maybe if I had kept uh, my three strongest GLs down south, uh, I might have been able to prevent my opponent from clearing the, the south zone and then force them to go north and then try to, to beat them on a f efficiency up north. So maybe I should have kept my Jedi Master Kenobi, my um, Lord Vader, and then probably my, um, um, and then two other GLs, maybe Ray and SLKR, four GLs down south, and um, and then uh, and then maybe saved one GL on offense, um, and then that way my opponent would have gone south, and maybe since they had three GLs on offense, maybe they would have struggled to take out uh, the four GL wall down south, and. Uh, uh, and then forced to go the northern route. And if they go the northern route, I would have also gone the northern route and maybe I would have been a little more efficient in taking out their teams. And at the same time, I had two non-GL teams in the south that I could have also taken out, the JTR squad and the, uh, the Darth Revan squad. I could have probably also, you know, in budget taken those out and got got a little bit more in efficiency so when you're when you're out rostered or, or, or when you when you face a really good opponent like that you have to go all in you have to put almost everything on defense or if you're confident of clearing 
take everything for offense there's no middle ground because you're going to you're going to lose that way but important lessons i think uh, you know i figured out pretty much uh, i i learned a ton uh, about, about what to do what not to do and uh, definitely made a lot of tweaks to my modding uh, going into week 2 so you'll get to see all that in my uh, next video for uh, for week 2 all the changes that i've made for uh, for modding for next week so that's it for me for uh, for this video hope you guys uh, um hope you guys had a um uh, in, are enjoying your first couple of weeks of gsc um we have uh, just about an hour left before the week 3 locks uh you know hope you guys get some good matches and um i'm uh, i'm I, i think i'm going to get some really good opponents as well um i'm uh, you know not as crazy as the ones who went 6 and 0 or 5 and 1 but i've i've so far gone 4 and 2 but let's see what kind of opponents i get i've uh, you know uh, one update is i just managed to unlock sith eternal just before uh, the lock of this gac doesn't have his ultimate but at least i have 6 gls right now so i will be competing with other people also who have have 6 gls so at least uh, from a gl perspective i'm on an equal footing but uh, in a couple of weeks when i have my ultimate um, for the next gac season i think that's when things will start to settle down uh, in the gac seasons uh, and we'll get to see uh, you know more opponents uh, who are on almost equal footing so i'm hoping to uh, you know get uh, get some um, really good matchups and hoping to be on an equal footing after I have my, after my sith eternal has got his ultimate as well but uh, until then uh, yep until then i'll uh, i'll probably use sith eternal on uh, on offense to take out some b teams let's see anyway that's it for now um, i will catch you guys in a few days when i upload the next video for uh, for week 3 until then take care and uh, happy gaming